Morning all. Um, feel free to ask any questions um, as long as, as we go along. This is uh, livestream.com slash Kings Crusher. So um, if you've got any questions as we go. This is uh, Ivanchuk's loss yesterday. Let's have a look at that. Um, so live streaming now. Uh, okay. So uh, this panu uh, playing white plays e4, and we get a Roy Lopez. Um, so Imanchuk is, I think, rank five in the world at the moment on the FIDE rank ranking list. So d4 and only d4 um, against this. Um, so this is a very solid, uh, I think, Berlin variation. Uh, which Kramnik used to play a lot. Uh, he used it to, to defeat Sparov in the Kramnik Sparov brain games match. Uh, so Black's got the Queen's off, and, and Black has the Bishop pair here. Okay, so Knight C3, Knight E7. It shouldn't be too many problems for Black, so I wonder how White uh, managed to get an advantage here. Okay, so after Knight E4, he Finch had his Bishop. Now this other knight is heading for c4. So knight is e4. So we've got a lot of pressure on on, on e5 here, um, and also you know tactical possibilities. If, if for example a rook came in, maybe there's knight d6s to consider. King still in the centre on e8 here. Sometimes it shifts to the queen side, but here might be a more of a tactical target. So. Um, Imachuk's playing around with his knights. Is he really going to get f5 now? This f5 square. No, it's contested. He goes for it anyway. A bishop outpost, but now knight d5. So immediately, it seems as though black's slightly uncomfortable here. These knights seem very nice. Uh, is black able to defend? Bishop b7. Okay. So offering up c7 so already uh, I wonder if, if there was a problem but uh, taking on c7 uh, he could leave himself with a stranded knight on a8 and black is just going to take on e4 so white has to be very careful he just protects the knight instead and now bishop takes d5 now black hasn't got the bishop pair that's a major concession and this bishop on f8 isn't that good it's blocked in by its own pawn on c5 um, I think I think I'll turn off the chess cube for the, the sound effects. I'm going to turn off chess cube in the background here. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> so right. So this this bishop's blocked in on, on f8. So. Rook e1, and now there might be an implication of knight d6. Check just to tear open uh, the e file at some point, or knight f6 even. Uh, so these are dangerous things which need to be factored in. Now knight f6 actually was played here. Knight f6. Check uh, because look, you know, Black's um, king is just trapped on e8, and White's just trying to rip open a line to the king. Uh, so King e7, he doesn't take that. That might be a complete disaster. Actually, you can imagine this diagonal being being opened up as well, uh, with with winning lots of material. So he just plays King e7. Now e6. Whoa. So I think there's a threat now of Rook d7, and if it takes takes, and that pawn, you know, Rook e8 is going to be terrible. So uh, so Imichuk takes check. He's just about holding on. E takes f7, so he's temporarily a pawn down. In fact, he's just swallowed a whole piece. Okay. But check, White's get, regaining the piece so to, to retain being a pawn up. King e6. And rook g5, targeting g7 now. Okay, so he lost his pawn, so what advantage has he migrated to here? 
it's equal on pawns but these pawns are at the moment targets for white's bishop white's bishop is more harmonious with the pawn structure here if this bishop has to defend with bishop d6 is that a problem actually he plays c4 I wonder if bishop d6 was a problem yes it was of course it is the weakness of the last move if bishop d6 just loses g7 so he, instead he plays c4 so he's going to be a pawn down now uh, so he's a pawn down but he's got a bit of um, play with his bishop it's outside um, you know it's not blocked in by that horrible pawn on c5 and when I was looking at yesterday I thought yeah Ivanchuk would draw this uh, what, what's the issue um, can he not draw a pawn just a pawn down here um, so so White's put in a lot of work here to grind down Ivanchuk uh, so let's see so black has got a, uh, a bishop which can be undermined on e3 so there's an outside pass pawn now which has emerged and what's white's winning plan here okay he reinforces the pass pawn that bishop's good on the diagonal so there's always bishop c7s to try and attack these pawns now uh, so those pawns are slightly vulnerable on the dark squares brings in this king to b5 that's part of the plan okay D doesn't mind just one pawn here one pawn will be enough maybe so he's going for that uh, to get his past b pawn b4 okay rook c4 first because otherwise bishop takes you can imagine um, bishop takes b4 maybe to deflect the king away and then take on so he first protects b4 to keep the pressure on b6 so he wins b6 and now here actually Ivanchuk resigned um, so his king's actually cut off on this c file so it's one of those situations that's very difficult and it's two pawns anyway so the bishop could just retreat being protected here and then so Ivanchuk didn't want to play on this position imagine the move like king uh, a5 then just get the pawn going and it's guided by the bishop on g3 to the queen in square so Ivanchuk resigned here I believe uh, so let's let's um, just overview and summary that. Uh, so, uh, any any questions from you guys? There's loving you there. Any questions at all? So it was a solid defense it seems, but I I think uh, one of the plans is Bishop D7 and King C8. I think that's a commonly played uh, plan. It seems here Black's King was a bit of a tactical uh, liability with this King E8. Uh, you know just sitting behind the e-pawn but um, the e-pawn can be um, taken away sacrificially uh, which which is what really happened so white had a lot of pressure here and uh, you know it doesn't doesn't seem that solid for black after knight f6 so it seems uh, very dangerous um, you know if let's, let's have a quick engine engine check of this position if if g takes had been played um so e takes uh, <clears throat> I should get this board a bit higher oh you can see you can see the engine analysis here so 97 it's massive advantage after rook takes d8 then taking there and it's a total disaster taking the rook so that's not a good idea to have uh, to, to consider taking that um, so after knight f6 we have e6 that seems to be a very good move as well to try and break down black it liberates this bishop uh, so check and now this temporary uh, peace sack because of rook e5 is quite clever so after all that, white has just increased his advantage slightly, and uh, so there's an issue now after bishop e5. This this guy's targeted this c7 pawn, so the bishop can't move. And then then we have a long grind after that. So it was a very well played game uh, by this and uh, no no major blunder like in in the Nakamura game where he was like about equal, and then there was this terrible blunder. 
just some nice points to remember. Points to remember. Do you, do you want me to say some points to remember? <laughs> Having your king safely tucked um, in the standard way. But um, let's look at some other games actually from from the Shirov um, game. Yeah, king safety I think can't be underestimated. Uh, it can be used as a, a way of getting a, a small but winning advantage. Uh, so maybe the plan, you know, bishop d7, king c8. Yeah. Just the nice, it says um, the king in the middle was a huge burden. Um, all right, so there's this other tournament, but let's let's save this and move on to some other games uh, for recent GM tournament. I think Wesley So had a, f a fantastic lead technical uh, French defense, which we'll look at next. But I'll save this now. <laughs> 